now before we get started make sure you download reactor if you don't have it already a link will be in the description down below you want to make sure you download and install these shaders here and without any further ado let's begin all right first things first i'm going to my effects panel under effects i'm gonna grab a fusion composition drop it on the timeline we're gonna go into fusion now of course we have nothing present so i'm gonna move this to the side and i'm gonna grab a 3d text note and i'm gonna grab a 3d renderer anytime you're messing around with 3d of course you need a renderer and actually render out what it is that you're creating so i'm gonna take the output connected to the renderer i'm gonna take the output of the render connected to my media app should get this blank composition up here I'm move this down with the 3d text selected i'm gonna go into the inspector tab go into the download box and i'm just gonna type in something and go down here and select my font and then my readjust the size you can adjust the 3d text node from the transform layout here or you can grab a transform node but this we're just going to use a transform in the inspector tab i'm just going to move it down the y-axis well actually before i do that i'm going to click into the viewer and hit Control g to bring up the grid then i'm going to use the y-axis kind of center it now behind this 3d text node i actually want to grab a 3d merge node make sure it's attached to my node flow and back in the inspector i'm going to select text again and go down to extrude i'm going to cut this up this is actually going to bring depth to the actual 3d text i'm selected merge 3d i'm gonna hit one on the keyboard by clicking in the mouse and right clicking you can actually move around the 3d space and go back to this 3d node and we need a light to actually be able to view this i'm gonna go to my render 3d and i'm gonna select lighting and shadows it's gonna blank out then i'm gonna hit control and space to bring them a toolbar i'm gonna type in lights get different lights in here available we're gonna go with the directional light you know take the output of the directional light and connect it to the merge 3d now when you're looking at your text, you can actually see the difference in it. For instance, if I go back to the renderer, uh, turn off lighting and shadows. You can see here it's kind of like jumbled together, like the lettering over here, you can't even really see. So go on the lighting, shadow, but with that activated, you actually can see what's going on now. With the merge select, you actually can see where the lighting is placed. You see right now it's actually in the middle of our text. So you can grab this little handle here, or you can click on the directional light and go into the inspector tab, type on transform, and you can move it. The different axes and if you want to move it back and forth you're going to move back and forth and move on the z axis you can actually rotate the light too the light will actually dictate different looks if you move it down of course there's no light on it move it up you can move it around and kind of change the look of it now in the beginning of the video i said to download the reactor and install it and you want to download the kick-ass shaders if you not have already make sure you do that but to bring those up i'm going to hit control space i'm going to type in kas i'm going to choose a particular shader this one i'm going to select we're going to select this heat shield and then actually be able to apply this we need a replace material so we're going to hit control and space type in replace and replace material 3d this way over here i'm gonna hold shift and get to my node flow then i'm gonna take the output of that shader and connect it to it and you see the text begin to change now if you go back into the 3d text node go down to the bottom you can actually change the bevel depth and the bevel width this basically just kind of round out the corner if i hit control and zoom in cut it up just a little bit you see i signed to round off I'm turn the depth down a little bit and to save a little bit on rendering you can actually cut off the bevel back you can see it makes a look it doesn't make that much of a difference so there's no reason to actually leave it there plus you can't see the back of it as well you can actually bring this up and down how you see fit about right there is pretty good so now we're going to create an animation so we're going to Select the 3D text node, I'm gonna go over to the inspector tab in the download box, I'm gonna click, I'm gonna right click, and then you're gonna select follower. The follower is gonna activate the modifier tab. Now this part here can be kind of confusing, just basically have to make sure you pay attention to what you're doing. Because in the regular 3D text, you have shader, transform, things like that. Then under modifier, you have transform shaders and things like that as well. So you wanna make sure you're on the right one. We're gonna be using shading on the modifier. But before we get to that, we're gonna change the order. When it says automatic, we change it from left to right. We're gonna leave in between each character as it is. And then we're gonna cut up, turn up the delay just a little bit, probably about, about two or so. From there, we're gonna go into shading. We're gonna scroll down to position, hit the drop down arrow, and we're gonna create a keyframe on the Z axis. Now the default diffuse composition is usually five seconds. I'm assuming that you have not changed those parameters, I'm actually going to go into frame 60 and I'm going to set a keyframe. Then I'm going to go to frame zero and bring it down. It doesn't go down far enough, so I'm actually going to double click, hit minus, I'm hit 25. As you can see now, it's really small in the background. It's going to create the keyframe. And over time, actually, I'm going to change this to single view so you can see it better. I'm going to right click, scale, scale to fit. And over the time, you'll see it begin to animate more or less one by one. Yeah, you notice that little stutter. I know sometimes if you push the Z axis too far back, you get the little stutter effect. 
So I'm actually going here to frame zero and I'm gonna double click and I'm gonna change it to negative 10. Also too, the texture is kind of resource heavy. So if you actually go through and select both these nodes and hit control P, they'll actually disactivate that texture. You basically want to reactivate it at the end. And now we're going back into our text, go back to the modifier, double click on follower, and we're going to go back to the timing. I'm going to turn this down a little bit, try to get rid of the little glitch delay. I guess it'll probably be like 1.53. Now, on the other hand, if you want more separation between your characters, you can crank this up to, if you crank it up, you can actually see it animate. So I'm gonna crank it up to 60, so that should be good. Take a look at it. Now you notice it actually goes past the 60th frame. We actually can adjust for that as well. Go up here to keyframes. I'm gonna actually hit this, this and zoom to fit. And actually, I'm gonna move this up so you can actually see better. I'm gonna hit F4 for full screen, zoom to fit again. Go into this 3D text, we hit the drop down, it's gonna show our keyframes. And select it, and then hold control, select the secondary frame, go down here to where it says keyframe stretcher or key stretch, click on it, and then you can actually tighten up those keyframes. So you get the same animation, but it'll just play out over time faster. So I'm gonna actually bring it up to, I'm gonna leave it at 40. And now let's go to 30. Then I'm gonna close the keyframes, bring this back down and play it back. Now you see you have this nice animation in between each character within your word. Now, of course you wanna smooth that out, I'm going to the spline editor, I'm move this down, or move this up, I'm sorry. 3D text, flip this to zoom to fit. You're going to select all by hitting this icon at the bottom. I'm going to hit F to flatten out the key, keyframes. Then I'm actually going to add a little ease in by moving this, or you can hit T on the keyboard to bring up the ease in, ease out animation. So this here, I got about 57 on the ease out. Let's crank this up a little bit on the ease in to about 45. Then I pull this back down. I'm going to close the spline editor. I can go back in here and select these two. Hit control P. That will bring back in my texture. And then on the edit page, you want to make sure you have your render cache on. Go to playback. Render cache. I got to set to smart. So over time, red line will fill it with blue and will cast the effect in the background. And you actually be able to play it back with a smooth animation. But we don't want it just to be in the background, just lingering around like some old bum on the street. So we're actually going to animate it. We're actually going to animate the opacity rather. So I'm going to go back into Fusion. Then we're going to animate the opacity. And once again, we're going to use the follower modifier. So make sure your 3D text is selected. And the Spectre tab, make sure you're on the modifiers tab. And we're going to animate the opacity. So I'm actually going to go to about frame 10. I'm going to set a keyframe and go to frame zero and bring it all the way down. Now, for some odd reason, when you have a texture on there like this with the kick ass shaders, it doesn't lower the opacity or animate the opacity for whatever reason. So if I Say for instance, when they were here, hit control P and cut it off. Now it animates. So I had to find a workaround. And the workaround I found to actually be able to, to animate the opacity is click on the placement material node and the spectre tab. By default, this is actually closed. We'll hit the drop down and the mode on each one of these is replace. We're gonna change it to multiply. Once they're done, you see this, the, the opacity goes down to zero and then you animate in over time. Come again, but also you notice it's a little bit duller now compared to what we had originally. We'll hold control and zoom out like the text is there, but you can see like some of the lighting is cut off. I'm gonna also go back to my directional light here. I'm gonna hit control C on it and then hit control V to create a new one, connect it to my 3D merge. Now it's hella bright. I'm gonna click on the transform and basically just gonna move it around to lessen the light of it. So you go here and Maybe rotate this to the side a little bit. Then we go back to the original directional light, rotate it a little bit. You basically just mess with the directional light, try to create a look that you want. You can actually add many more lights in if you want to as well. But the last little bit of songs are gonna be the motion blur. So I'm gonna go to a render 3D, go to settings, motion blur, and type in four at 260. And go back to the edit page. We get the opacity animated in. We wanna animate the whole thing out. I'm just gonna drop down this little fade out here. And we play it back. You got the motion blur, you got the opacity animation, and then it fades out at the end. If you got any value out of today's video, help support the channel by hitting that like button for the YouTube algorithm, and I'll see you in the next video.